Wow. Just look at the difference a short period of time can make out in your landscape. This looks like just a little dead tree with a bunch of sticks. And just a few weeks ago, it looked like that. Full of foliage, full of fruit. This is the American Beautyberry, Calicarpa Americana. It is deciduous, so it has lost its leaves. It does have just a couple of leaves left, but not many. And this is a very good time in my zone to go ahead, prune it back, and make hardwood cuttings. Come join me. Hi, I'm Elise. I'm glad that you stopped by. I know we normally think of spring as being the best time to do cuttings, which it is, especially if it's herbaceous cuttings, softwood cuttings, things like that. But fall is also an excellent time to start hardwood cuttings, especially on trees or plant shrubs that are deciduous. They've lost all their leaves. Now is the great time to go ahead and do hardwood cuttings. And just as it says, it's hard wood. Now this is the American Beauty Berry that we just talked about, just showed you. And I have made a few cuttings. And I have all different diameters. Does it matter? The secret to getting a good result in cuttings is to do a lot. <laughs> it's that simple. All right, so now I'm going to go through and trim this up some. I want to make an angled cut right below a node, and a node is where the leaves used to come out, or a stem used to come out. It's still green, still healthy. Four inches, six inches, eight inches, whatever you want to do. Now, it's not going to have leaves on it. And since we don't have leaves to help with the orientation, be very careful how you lay your cuttings so that you get the correct end in the soil. Sometimes I just take a jar and as I'm cutting, I drop them down in the jar. So I'm going to come all the way up here and make another cut. Now, another thing that you can do is go ahead and flatten that cut off. So you know the ankle cut is at the bottom, the flat cut is at the top. Some folks take a little marker and mark down here that this is the bottom. It is up to you. If you're only doing a cutting at a time and not more of an assembly line, all you have to do is go ahead and process each cutting as you go. Now I'm going to go in and wound it a little bit. And wounding is just scraping off some of the bark. And what that's going to do, it allows more surface room for one thing, but it also tells the plant, oh hey, I've got a wound. Let me send some hormones and some chemicals down there and start the rooting process. I'm also going to use a little aloe vera for my rooting hormone. I don't always use rooting hormone, but sometimes for hardwood cuttings, might as well use everything we can. So, now, don't just, let me move this over, don't just stick your cutting in. It doesn't matter what you use for your rooting hormone, powder, liquid, gel, store-bought hormones, it doesn't matter. If you stick that in your dirt like that, most of your rooting hormone is going to wipe off. So make your hole first, just use a stick, pencil, whatever, and then put it in, snug it up. That's all you have to do. So that one's done. I'm going to do a smaller one. Cut it at an angle, right under a node. Wound it just a little bit. In between the nodes, both sides in between your nodes. You don't want any new growth. You don't want flowers, berries, seeds, anything on your cuttings. Now, if you're doing cuttings that still have leaves, you can save some of your leaves. But on deciduous plants, chances are those leaves are going to drop off. And I'm going to come up here and make that just a little shorter. I made a straight cut across. Got my little pocket of aloe vera. 
And if you do want to save time, just go through, make your little holes. And you can put numerous cuttings in one pot. Especially hardwood cuttings because they don't have leaves and you can get them closer together. So that one's there. Put it in, snug it in. This is just some all purpose potting soil. You can use sand, yard soil, uh, special soil for cuttings. You can use um, moss. You can use anything, soilless soil <laughs> whatever you want to use just make sure you have really really good drainage holes because these are going to sit for a while mine are going to go outside and i want really good drainage holes now this piece actually has a few leaves left but that one is probably too small i can still stick it in Let's go ahead and do this little slim one. It's got a little leaf action going on at the top. Clean them up underneath a node. That's a hawk. <laughs> and from what I've read, a hawk will scream like that or squeal, screech when they're either hunting prey, marking territory, or looking for their mate. I'm not a bird expert. That's just something I read. All right, put it in the existing hole, snug it up. And I never stick my cuttings in so far that they're against the bottom of the pot because you want room for your roots to come out. So here is another just big piece. It does have a little bitty node here. I'm going to freshen that cut up just a little bit. Go in and wound it. You do not have to cut it at an angle. You do not have to wound it. That's entirely up to you. But it's just like rooting hormone. The more help you give it, maybe the better chances of it taking. Like I said, you can do an assembly line. You can go through, do all your cuttings at one time, get all of them prepped, all of them ready. And this is a nice big cutting. I'm going to come, I think I'll come all the way up here, cut it at an angle, take a little bit of that node off, wound it, come up right below this node, Cut it a straight angle and it's ready to dip in the little aloe vera pouch and put in the pot. Now, some folks also will go up and put a little rooting hormone on the top or cinnamon, something like that. That is entirely up to you. And if you want to go back and do it, it's that easy. Really gunky, isn't it? Aloe vera is a fantastic rooting hormone. If you get a chance, watch my video uh, and I'll share with you how I prep it and get it ready and all the advantages, all that good stuff, and a little bit more about the rooting hormone. All right, since I made that cut there, I'm just going to freshen it up a little bit at an angle. There's my nodes going in between the nodes, wounding it. I'm going to go up a node, here's a node, and I'm going to go up to this node and make a straight cut. Okay, so that one's ready. Into the little aloe vera pat and into my already hole, <laughs> existing hole. Snug it in. That's it folks. That is how easy it is to do a hardwood cutting. Don't be afraid of diameters. Don't be afraid of links. Just experiment. If you've got a lots of planting material, then be brave. Do a longer one. That's all you have to do. 
It does help if you have a node. It helps if you have a node or two underneath the soil, but you can't always do that. So you just do the best you can. There. Now I have a few more to do and I'll finish these up. And if you're going to do an assembly line, what you can do is take a cluster at one time if your clippers are sharp enough you've got your straight end and now come in and just take a moment make sure you're under a node make sure you have an angle cut if that's what you want to do wound them you can do dozens of these in just a few moments again just depends upon how much resource material you have. Don't get hung up that you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. The only thing you have to do is to try. I'm going to make a few more little holes in here. This soil is slightly moist, so it is going back in when I press the holes in. This way I also know that all of the bottom parts are in the bottom of my hand. That's it. Come back, snug all these in. So I have a couple of leaves. Most of them don't have leaves. I have um, different diameters, little different lengths. But, you know, it's going to work. Now, this particular plant does make cuttings extremely easy. When it puts out new growth in the springtime, the new growth is where all your flowers and your berries will come on. So, you want to make sure you do your cuttings for the American Beauty Berry, either late fall, early winter, or late winter, very early spring, all depending upon your planting zone because everybody's going to be a little different. The American Beauty Berry grows in zone 6 through 11. You can grow it in the ground, you can grow it in containers. I already have my label made. I'm going to miss these very, very well. They'll go into bright, indirect light, no hot sun. Or if you've got a hot house, a heated garage, a sunroom, you can put them in that. If we get cold, I can always come out and tent them. If it looks like they're lose, getting dry too fast, I can tent them. And that will hold humidity in. But that's the American Beauty Berry. Now, if you're concerned about doing hardwood cuttings, let me share this with you. When we do cu uh, cuttings, softwood cuttings, semi-soft cuttings, herbaceous cuttings, you know, in the springtime, when the plants are still leafed out, and you do your cutting and you say, take all your leaves off except the last couple on top, and then you cut that back. You leave your leaves on these softwood cuttings or herbaceous cuttings to help with photosynthesis. In the sun, indirect bright light, that is going to pull energy, the plant's going to make sugars, and that helps establish your root system. On hardwood, semi-hardwood cuttings that you don't have leaves, the actual cutting will have some energy stored in it. So the energy in that cutting is going to be used to produce the roots. That's why it does take a little longer normally for hardwood cuttings. Now, here's some seeds I collected because you can also propagate American Beauty Berry from seeds. I have quite a few seeds that I collected I cooked some, I stored some in the freezer. If you're going to put them in the freezer, just wash them very well, spread them out on a single layer, maybe on parchment or something like that. Stick them in your freezer to flash freeze them. 
When they're frozen, then put them in a sack, your storage sack, storage container, whatever you want to use. But when you're first freezing them, do spread them out, and that way you don't get a clump of frozen berries. Then when you want to use some berries for your cooking, just thaw them out, and they're ready to go. Now, if you're saving your berries for seeds, or like what I'm going to do, is I save them to feed the birds in the winter time. There's over 40 varieties of birds that love this berry. So, I let them dry very, very well. I spread them out, let them dry. Then I just put them in a mason jar with a lid as long as I know they're dry. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but this is how small the seeds are. Very, very small seeds. Each little berry can have two to four seeds in it. If you're saving these for seeds to replant, you still want them to dry out if you're going to save them in the berry method. You can go ahead and remove the seeds while the berry is fresh. Some folks put it in a blender. Some folks just go through and smash it. It is up to you. I do the drying in the berry method. So I don't remove the seeds yet. Again, if I'm going to save them for seed, I will spread them out on a single layer. I'll put them somewhere to dry. And it does take a couple of weeks for these to dry completely because it still has the flesh of the berry around it. After they're completely dry, then you can store them in whatever method you normally use to store your seeds. When you get ready to plant these, put them in some water, soak them for a bit, a couple hours, something like that. It's going to hydrate that berry. And you can either just plant the whole berry right then, or what I usually do is I just squeeze it a little bit to help it get started, like I did here and then I just plant it and it works. So however you want to do it, what is your time limitations, you know, your resources, so that's what you want to do. Many ways you can use your seeds. Now, I am going to save a few seeds back just in case something happens. I always save seeds, but the majority of these seeds, like I said, is going to go to feed the wildlife in the winter time. Neat, huh? So from the American Beauty Berry, you get all these great fruits, you get all these great seeds, it's great for the wildlife. If you get a chance, I made a video talking about the basics and showing one of the plants in bloom and in the fruiting stage. Watch it if you can. Okay, now I am a new channel. If you can help me grow, I would greatly appreciate it by liking, sharing, subscribing, watching the videos in their entirety, and make sure you hit that notification bell. I'll see you again. This is something else I want to show you on the American Beauty Berry. I did some softwood cuttings earlier in the year, and they're doing very well. They're in a trade gallon to gallon size pots. Most of them are tip cuttings or terminal end cuttings and as you can see some of them are already a foot or two long and developing that characteristic sprawl so I'm going to come in here now and cut this off I'm going to prune them all up try to make them all about the same size you don't have to that's just a personal preference then the tips that I cut off I will consider those softwood cuttings. I'll prepare them like that, and I'll go ahead and just stick them back down into that same pot. If they take, fantastic. Then in the spring, when the plants bush back out, I'll have more foliage. And when you prune them back, you get a chance for more lateral growth, which means more flowers, more berries, more berries for me, more berries for the wildlife. American Beauty Berry lends itself fantastically to cuttings. 
Uh, I hope this is something that you can add to your landscape and that you've learned a little bit about hardwood cuttings. Till we speak again, have a fantastic day.